If you want to grab our men's lifestyle supplement, male advantage ebook, or my personal workout and diet plan, all links are in the bio. Okay guys, so today we got the much anticipated return of body language analysis videos and probably the even bigger anticipated return of Ragnar Lothbrok body language analysis breakdown. Now I did the first one around about 11 months ago, so close to a year ago now. It's going to be part two today, I know I promised it a lot sooner, but it's taken a long time to find the right clips. I've been on the phone to Amazon Prime, to the History Channel, trying to get those clips in like the highest possible quality. Um, to no avail, it's some, something to do with rights, like who actually owns it, it's very, very difficult. So I've got one clip that is in HD, which is the second part, and the first one is like 720, but it still looks pretty good. So we're going to move over to the screen now, we're going to break down the body language. Okay guys, to begin with, we got a very interesting clip, this is the one where Ragnar's actually injured, and he's having to reinstate dominance over everybody. It's quite interesting to see. We've never really seen him in this vulnerable position. So um, I think it's a great one to break down. What should we make any kind of deal with them? We've lost nearly a thousand men. We can't reach the city and winter is coming. Do you need more reasons? Why did they offer terms if they are so sure we cannot get into the city? We have probably run out of food. And we should let them starve. Ah, then they will hate us. Okay, so we can see here straight away. Let's use yellow so it shows up. <sighs> He's clear, like he's gone to respond, and now he immediately looks down to the floor. It's almost like a submissive move. He's like raising his palm to the sky. This hand is across his uh, midsection, protecting his vital organs. I know he's injured, but it's a massively vulnerable position. And you guys will find this in real life, okay? When you've got like a cold or something, people kind of see you as lesser than what you really are. It's like if you've got an injury, if you're like hobbling along, if you're on crutches or something, right? People kind of see you as lesser. It's like, even to some extent, if you pull up in like an old car, everybody thinks of you as worse, okay? You do, you get treated with less respect, or if you haven't had a haircut, you get treated with less respect. Like, there's really small things that people judge us based on. And being complete, like, he's older in this series, I believe. Um, he's obviously got the injury. Like, he, I think he even says in this season that he's a dying man. You know, he doesn't, he's not as youthful as he once was. He hasn't got his hair, etc. Like, people are looking at him and thinking he could be on the way out. We could take the crown. And as he's gone to respond, everybody's butt in. So, this is very important to how he reclaims the dominance in a second. So, straight away, we can see there. Let's go back. Ah, then they will hate us even more. They will hate us even more. Just here, ready? I said to you that he had his um, hands around his waist to begin with. Now he plants them both on the knees, okay? It's the way that I showed you guys how to get up before. When you stand up, if you put both hands on your knees and, you, and your knees are planted wide, your feet are planted wide, when you stand up, you just look so dominant and he's used that straight away. I have something to say. And he butts straight in, okay? So other people are talking. I have something to say. He goes straight in with it. It's not, please, can I talk or can I say something? You know, he's not asking for it. I have something to say. And he just expects everybody to shut up. Now, he's still got this vulnerable hand positioning going on over here, over his midsection, but he is injured. Okay, but it's very good to see how he counterbalances that with just raw dominance. I did not become ill. Because I aspire to be one. It came about because of other people's actions. So the way he's leaning in here, he's trying his best to stand upright as well. I imagine with some, I know he's acting, but with the abdominal pain, it'd be quite hard to stand in an upright position. He's trying his best because if he was bent over, it just wouldn't look as good. But the way he's leant in here, making piercing eye contact, he's obviously taller than her. He's kind of asserting that dominance and looking down. You've got people looking out the corner of their eyes here, almost like a prey move, looking at the predator. Like, is he going to move on to me next? You know, he's asserting dominance immediately. And I did not become... And he held the eye contact for a long few seconds there. That was probably like four or five seconds. And 
You watch when he looks away. He didn't look away immediately. Watch this. Because of other people's actions. Okay, let's try and get the moment. Okay, so he's got it here. Watch this. This is quite a dominant move, okay? If you just looked away completely and you turn your head, it doesn't look as good as if you hold eye contact for a little bit whilst your head slowly turns. Watch what he does. And I did not become king out of ambition, but once again, I had no choice as a result of other people's actions. So he's making it personal to a lot of people. He's seeing other people's actions and then staring them in the eye. He's doing what I showed you on that Tommy Shelby body language analysis video a few, uh, a few months back, maybe even a year now, where he makes his way around the group and he individually picks out each, each person. He looks at them, he points at them, he says you, he makes it specific, he stares them in the eye. It's like a, it's like a belittling type of move where he's calling people out. He's, it, it, just, it kind of shows that he's the boss and he's calling people out on their mistakes and their actions because they're clearly getting too big for their boots here. But nonetheless, I am king. King Ragnar. That is my name. King Ragnar. See the slow walks as well, guys? Watch uh, these slow stomps that he does. He's very good at this. Ragnar. That is my Okay, so watch it here. Watch his feet. Watch how slow it is. King Ragnar. I know he's injured, but he's kind of stomping around the place. He's the actor is so good at this. There's so many different clips I've broken down of his. What does a king do? Yeah. Again, he's walked up to another person. He's made strong eye contact. He's walked straight up close to him, but he still have has this vulnerable hand there, okay? He rules. Yes! Good! He rules! And as a rule... And what we've got now is like, even though this hand is here, if we just go back slightly, I'll try and catch the moment. Yes! Good! He rules! So his hand came up there. And his hand's coming out here, okay? This is quite a, it's quite a good clip. So, we've got the vulnerable hand here, but we have got the long wide stomps going on, okay, this, this here I think he's turning because the terrain's a little bit difficult, it looks as though it goes uphill here, so that leg probably has to come across that one for balance purposes, you know, I'm just speculating, but it, personally if I was doing it, I know he's injured, but I would have the legs a little bit wider, kind of walking outwards, he's done that before in the past, but I think where he's injured, he's kind of playing that role, but what I want to draw your attention to is the way he's now compensating with this arm. He's starting to swing it a lot wider, okay? That could be positioned there. It could be positioned across there, but it isn't. It's, p it's positioned out here. It makes him a lot wider, and he keeps doing these outward hand gestures with this arm to compensate for that one. It's almost like an overcompensation. So it gives him this wider framed look, okay, from here. Whereas if this arm followed this arm, and it kind of went inwards, it would make him look very narrow and submissive. But he kind of has to overcompensate with this one because he's being protected here. That makes him look vulnerable. So this hand has come up here at one point. It's going out here. I'm sure it co goes wider as well if I freeze it at a different point. But it's very important that he's doing that. And as a ruler, I... See the way it's swung as well? It's kind of like a swaggered walk. Watch this. Good. He rules. And as a ruler, I... See that swinging around there, guys? He's trying to create as much kind of width with his frame as possible, okay? This, this is what kind of a swaggered walk is all about. It, it just makes you look wider. Your limbs are swinging around. It just makes you look kind of like loose and in control and confident. You know, if somebody's like uptight and all their limbs are like in tight, close to their body, it shows that they're trying not to be noticed. Okay, so this is a move that I used to use in sales, okay? When you're on the phone, you whisper uh, in certain moments and it kind of makes it personal to that person. It's a very dominant move because you're, it's especially in real life, because obviously he's getting in her personal space, he's whispering in her ear, which makes it personal to her. So whatever he has to say is gonna hit harder to this woman, okay? So if it's something bad, if it's something personal, if he's calling her out on something, the whisper just has that emphasized effect. And then he puts even added effect to it straight after. Me! Okay, he's basically screaming in her face. And this is quite interesting in the background. She's still making good eye contact. It's a very strong woman, okay? But they're holding good eye contact. He's done the whisper in there to like assert dominance and kind of 
say like I own this personal space I can come right in here it's just a dominant move and then he comes back around the front and he screams around this side and it's just that change in elevation it's a tonality trick Pear Bristow who was on he would be fantastic to break that down but kind of the change in pitch it almost insinuates a level of craziness you'd expect it from somebody like the Joker a whisper in the ear and then a scream you know he's basically saying I can do whatever I want and that pitch change has a real dramatic effect on how much like attention that you can draw. I used to do it in sales, like I said, you'd you'd add a little whisper and then you'd like maybe crack a powerful joke straight off the back of it that was a lot louder. You know, we'll say, fantastic, let's wrap this up. You know, you'd get this, you'd like punch that in straight after a whisper. And the whisper would be something like, um, you know, you'd say, let me tell you something. And then they'd come in really close to the phone. Like you just knew, like they started talking a little bit louder because they were like, they'd squeeze. It's just a natural instinct for a human. You'd squeeze the phone closer into your mouth and ear because you'd be like, well, what's this person about to tell me? You know, or you'd be like, and you can look good in front of your boss, you know, but just keep that between us. Like you just say something and then you go, fantastic, let's wrap this up. And that change in pitch is almost like I control the tone. I'm controlling the pace. I'm controlling the volume. And that's what Ragnar's doing a lot here. But this is interesting. Look, as soon as he screams, this guy looks straight down to the floor, okay? That's a very, very submissive move. And of course, like people say, it's only acting, bro. It's like, no, I know, but they're trying to evoke certain emotions. They're trying to convince you that this is real. So this is taken from real life body language and that's exactly what he's doing there. Not you! No okay, very personal again, not you. Like very commanding, pointing at people, almost shoving it out. Watch the hand, it's like a shove. It's very aggressive. Save me! Not you! See that, it's almost like a jab. Not you, not you, and not you! And he's gone around pretty much everybody in the group. And the final thing, look at this piercing eye contact. That is piercing. That's very aggressive. You could actually do with some water retention. Anybody who's familiar with my channel at the moment, if he went through some water retention, slight body fat loss, he'd look unbelievable. You've all had your ideas. And they have all failed. There's that open hand gesture again with the opposite hand. The way he rips it out to the side to compensate for the one that's kind of lacklusterly sitting on his midsection, protecting his vital organs, which is a, a wildly submissive move. It's what women do with like handbags or a coat or something. They'll like protect their midsection when they feel insecure and vulnerable. You've all had your ideas. And they have all failed. See what I mean? The way he flicks it out. He's overcompensating. He's trying to make himself look bigger on the one side because that side is so tight. I will not. See the way he made him look down? It's very submissive. If you make eye contact with somebody and they look down to the floor, it basically means you win. And you've got to be careful what guys you do that to because some, you know, are just ready to fight at all times and they're really good at it. Um, majority of men will probably look away or look down, you know, if, they, if they've watched these videos they might be a little bit more aggressive towards you or kind of resistant to looking down, but at the same time, you know, how many people really fight in the modern era? Like some people put in the comments, yeah, but bro, what if somebody like comes up and stabs me? I'm like, where do you live? Seriously, where do you live? Because I just don't see that happening. Um, you know, and if it does, move areas, because it's clearly not good for you, okay? But if you do this to a woman, and you're making eye contact for like four or five seconds, and then she looks down and smiles, immediately go over, because you've just won that power struggle, and she obviously thinks better of you. But if you're the one who looks down to the floor, forget about it, you've probably lost her. Okay, so this is very important. You can see the look on everybody's face. They're almost like, this is supposed to be our king, our leader. He's very vulnerable, the way he's coughing and stuff. Can we trust this man to lead us anymore? <laughs> they actually went over to help there and he pushed them away. That's, that's very important. I don't know if you can see that, guys. But they're coming over. There. Put his hand up. Put his hand up and backed off. He pushed somebody away. He doesn't want to be helped because then it makes him seem vulnerable, okay? It's little things like that that are very important. You know, a lot of women see things like that as well. Like, if a guy's going through a terrible time and he's like 
crying out for help or like, oh, I really need you, you know, without you in my life, I just feel vulnerable. When guys say stuff like that, it just turns them off. And it's very important as a man. It's, it's as hard as it is sometimes, guys. I know how difficult it is. Like sometimes when you're going through shit, you just want to reach out to somebody, you know, and spend time with somebody and mix it up. You can never let people show how, you can never let people see how vulnerable you are or your true feelings as a man. Now, occasionally, obviously, you know, Look, if you want to let your feelings out, go and hire like a psychiatrist and sit there for an hour or two and vent, okay? But people will say, oh, men should express their feelings. I, I promise you, the second you do, everybody thinks less of you. If a man starts crying, you know, women are like, oh, it's cute that he's showing his emotions. Not one of them wants to fuck you, though. It's just, it's like as a man, you just always need to be fucking militant. It's, it is tough. It is tough, but... At the same time, the the if you think that is difficult, the other side where you show your vulnerability is even worse because everyone starts treating you like shit. Women's fucking vaginas just dry up like it's an absolute nightmare. So, just gotta be boss mode twenty four seven. Now, there's no more discussion. We shall meet the Franks tomorrow. It's quite important there. There will be no more discussion. It's another command, okay? He's not saying, oh, can somebody help me or whatever. He's clearly in pain. It's just, you know, he's asserted dominance there again. And with his final move, again, he asserts dominance. Just just if people were questioning if he was still fit enough to lead. Okay, so the other clip didn't have it, but here it is. So he makes a beeline for this guy. He walks very close to him. He actually shuffled his feet. He stepped back. He's holding eye contact while Ragnar's not looking at him, which means he's still worried, okay, he's still worried, and he actually made an exact beeline for him to kind of say, look, I'm still the king, move out of my way, it's very important that he's done that. Come with me. And then come with me, another command, okay, so let's move on to the second clip. Okay, so this scene here reminds, obviously he's ill, so he's leaning on that, but, you know, this normally wouldn't be the most... This would normally wouldn't be the best stance, okay? Like, kind of shoulders are high, um, hands are in the middle, they're kind of, like, protecting, they're covering his face, okay? Usually, what I, what you would do if you had this big stick or whatever, you would usually have it out here, down by your sides, you know, this arm would be out here, creating just a massive frame, head would be held high, so chin position would be up here and parallel to the ground, and eyes would still be strongly set on whoever he's looking at, which actually I think is this guy over here, okay? But he is ill, he's using this to prop him up. But what I get from this is very, you know, have you ever seen those pictures of like lions and tigers when they're like drinking water? Okay, and they like dip their head down, but they're looking up, so the eyes are still darted up. I kind of get that impression here, where it's predator, and here's the prey. That's the image that I get from this, okay? Five thousand seven hundred and sixty pounds in gold and silver. Or was a month. So it's important here that he's not answering, okay? You don't always have to answer. If you don't have anything to say, if you don't like something, sometimes silence is better than actually speaking. This is the court, Brenets. This all lost the frère, l'empereur, but the Paris approximant. He urges you to accept the offer. Reinforcements are on their way to Paris. So right there, his entire body language changes. Okay, so he's been threatened. He's, you know, urge you to take the money because reinforcements are coming. Once he's been threatened in that sense, you know, and somebody's threatening his manhood and saying, basically, I've got guys coming that will kill you, you should probably take the offer, his kind of ego kicks in, and he's, like, straight away, like, I haven't stopped this at the exact best moment, but instead of leaning on here now, he's straightened up, okay, he's stood up a lot straighter, he's actually made himself a lot wider, it's become personal. There, see, straight away, like, his whole body language opened up. Watch this. So everything's closed at this point. Watch how it opens up, okay? Watch the difference. Accept the offer. Reinforcements are on their way to Paris. So we've got that compared to that. Like, everything just opened up immediately. He probably braved through the pain or whatever, but he just changed completely. And that, that's the thing you can do in body language, to be fair. You can switch it on and off. 
So if you're just casually going about your day, you're probably not thinking of it, okay? A lot of it will be subconscious, but you're probably not thinking about being top alpha every 24-7, you know, every single hour of the day for the, for the whole fucking week. You're not exactly like hell-bent on being that top guy. It might come naturally to you, but there's certain moments where you might need to switch it on to prove to somebody that they, they need to shut the fuck up or they need to stop questioning you or that girl needs to come to bed with you right now. Tell him. So he's done the stomp. You can see the stomp as he's like making the big stride straight over. And this is a different man now. Look at that piercing eye contact. He's got a more aggressive look on his face. But look at this shape. Now, obviously, he is a much big. He is a big guy in real life, but he's got this wider frame now. And what did I say about the stick? I didn't actually plan this out. He stamped that stick down here because that is probably the best, most like authoritative position that you can put this in okay and he stamped that down on the ground he stomped over he's got as close to this individual as possible um i say individual for obvious obvious reasons um and he's just got like the wide chest here now like everything just looks like 10 times more menacing he's just changed his body language up completely and he's grabbed this individual too i know that Look at that. Hasn't left eye contact for a second. It's just holding eye contact whilst dominating this individual here. Has actually spun them round and um, invaded their private space. No one is coming to save him. And then the shove. Okay, so that's extremely dominant. Now, I'm not saying walk around shoving people, but, you know, obviously I'm just breaking down these clips. It's fun to do. If, if we were going to do body language on daily etiquette, it'd be completely different. But obviously these are fun to look at. And the offer is not enough. And again, he's butting in, which he did in the other conversation. There is something I also seek that has no tangible worth, but to me is more precious. I want to be baptized. Sivak had baptized at Levitt said. He so want to enable me. He doesn't understand. I am a dying man, and when I die, I want to be re- Notice as well, guys, not, a lot, not enough men do this, okay? Hold eye contact while they're talking. He's literally held eye contact, so, so we assume. I imagine there's, there might not be anybody there. They might be filming from the side, okay? But just as a lesson, it's very important when you're talking to somebody to hold eye contact the entire time. It's very easy when somebody else is talking to hold eye contact because you're not the star of the show. It's almost like watching a watching a play at the theatre or something like that. You're just watching the star on stage. But when you start talking, everybody seems to become a bit of a pussy and they start looking down at the ground, they start scratching, they start looking to the side. It doesn't work as well, okay? Be united with my Christian friend who happens to be in your heaven. A thank you, Paradise Anna. So his face changed straight away. He could sense that that was aggressive via the tonality. Just turned and frowned at that guy. That guy's now on his radar. To hell, not heaven. No hesitation. Okay. That's very, very important. No hesitation. That guy said something shitty. Once he's found out what it is, he marched straight over. No hesitation. You know, big stomps over to him. It's very important to do things like this in life. To, you know, not back down and shy away, whatever. Like, I, to be honest, guys, my mentality in life is I, I don't even care if I get a beating. I'd much rather say I actually stood up for myself and what I believed in and got beaten up than shied away and looked down at the floor like a little pussy. See the way he's marching over the big stomps, he's dropped the stick to make it dramatic, he's holding the very strong eye contact and he's got within centimetres of this guy's face to make it completely personal. And a massive invasion of, um, invasion, sorry, of his personal space there by actually laying his hand on the side of this guy's face. You know, his head as well, a massively vulnerable area, something that could be deemed as aggressive sexual and I'm not saying this one is but you know when you do these things it's very intimate and personal with that individual um and that's what Ragnar's doing here whilst yeah his his eyes definitely help he's got those piercing blue eyes but the way he's just staring this guy in the in the eyes and holding his face at the same time and he's within centimeters of him he's just he's asserting dominance he's very good at this like people do stand up to him and then he just says wrong move pal that is not your decision to make 
The sacrament of the Nephoront. They will make arrangements for the ceremony. This is a man of God, is it not? And this is what am I right? Somewhat again. Now you're not going to do this in real life. You know, it's not. There's not many occasions where you're going to be able to do this. But he had his decision made, he had his mind made up, he just walked straight into the water. He knew what he wanted, okay, everybody follow me. It's, it's quite a significant moment there. You will do it here, and you will do it now. See his posture in those two moments as well, guys, if we go back, like how he was so closed up earlier, watch the difference. And this! So... Let me see if I can get a better freeze frame, if you would. That's not too bad, okay? So we can already see now by the way he's walking, okay? Before he was very closed up. Now look, arm out to the side. That one ends up swinging down here as well. He's walking a lot wider. He's walking a lot more confidently now. He might still be in pain, but he's strutting. This. Look, you can see. Like, look at the width. There's one hand there, one hand there. Like, there's a massive change in width from some things that we saw in the other clip. Here's what, am I wrong? You will do it here, and you will do it now. And even this posture as well, guys, this is the final thing I want to draw your attention to. The wide shoulders, the elbows flaring out, the wide arms, same this side, probably even more exaggerated. There's just some giant width there, okay? Now it helps, obviously, if you get in the gym, you know, you can expand this sort of area, expand your lats the triceps, biceps, etc. It puffs everything out, makes it look obviously a lot more expansive. But you can see that posture there. That's a masculine posture, okay? It's very important to do these sort of things. Some I, I made a fitness video recently. Somebody said you're very good at um, creating like masculine postures and like having yourself in like a masculine position when you like take pictures and when you do videos and whatnot. Yeah, it's, well, it comes from body language. Like, there's certain poses that you can do. There's certain movements that you do that just make you look stacked. It's like when people are doing a seated lap pull, it just makes them look enormous. You know, there's just just certain movements. And um, this sort of posture here, like stuff like hands on knees when you're getting up, like ha these arms being like wide around a chair or something, or, you know, this kind of, it's a somewhat crouch seat in position where his frame is just puffed out and it looks really wide, you know? Certain things that just make you look more dominant than you actually are or just make you look more dominant in general. And, um, you know, certain features like beards and whatnot, like there's just certain things that you can do, shaved head, you don't have to be bold, but like shaved head. Like it's just, like I said before, creating that hyper-masculine character. I made a whole video on this. There's certain things you can do as a man that will just, bump you up a few notches, you know, like, like some guys get tattoos and people all automatically think they're scarier than what they are. Like there, there's all sorts of things that you can do as a man. If you combine that with body language, you get in the gym and you add some width to your frame, then, you know, a lot of this all comes together. Okay, guys, but I hope you enjoyed the video. That's going to be it. Um, I will be making obviously more of these. They, they, they might be less frequent. I'm not sure. I think when the new Bond comes out and the new um, Peaky Blinders comes out, obviously there's a ton of content to be made there and I have to make videos on them. But I'm looking to do like more gym vlogs, travel vlogs. I'm looking to do the streaming platform. If I get time to do these, then look, I'll squeeze them in. If I find great clips, then I'm going to do them. Um, but I wouldn't mind, like I said in a previous video, actually going and getting like the actor here, Ragnar's, I can't remember the guy's name, but actually going and getting Ragnar the actor, watching these clips with them and being like, what did you do here? Why did you do that? Like, what were you trying to achieve with, like, with Ragnar in general? Like, how did you master that walk? Like, is that something you practiced at home? Like, that sort of stuff would be insane. I think that would be the future of these body language analysis videos. But that's it for today, guys. I'll speak to you all soon. Have a good one. If you want to grab our men's lifestyle supplement, Male Advantage ebook, or my personal workout and diet plan, all links are in the bio.